What's up guys, it's Eli Infante, and today we're in beautiful Ohio shooting at Marblehead Lighthouse. And I'm gonna give you an insight into how I do my location scouting before I shoot. One of the first things I look for is the available light. Today we have a very uh, cloudy day, so I'm looking at possibilities of where I can get some beautiful rim light with the sun, seeing if I can get backlit portraits. But I also love to get my subject interacting with the environment. So because we're at a lighthouse, I know for sure I'm gonna get some wide angle shots, but I also want to use some of the rocks here on the, the lakeside, but I also love some of the lines. So the first thing that I saw when I got to this location was this tree and it does have some beautiful brown tones for this photo shoot. I knew that I wanted to go with earth tones and so immediately I know I can get a very simple shot of maybe the subject standing or sitting on the rocks but use the tree to frame the shot and then still get a little bit of texture because we do have some whites and blues and that'll be an awesome image when I do my final color grading. In my work, I love having my subject interact with the environment. So as I'm location scouting, we see these beautiful rocks. There's multi multiple things I can do. I can have the subject sit, I can have her stand, I can have her lean up against this rock, and I can get three different looks in one simple spot. And as I was mentioning, we have this beautiful tree. We're gonna use it as framing. We get the beautiful blues, we get the beautiful texture in the clouds. And so this is a shot that I can definitely work and make it look great. I am gonna be using a 35 millimeter lens. Once again, I'm in this beautiful location. I wanna show it off. I don't wanna use the highly compressed lens like an 85 or a 135 and really just blur out the background. I'm gonna try my best to really show off this location. Fortunately, I don't have the clouds to diffuse the light. Now, I love this composition, but of course we're gonna get this hard shadows in the shot or this harsh lighting, I should say. So I'm gonna have Olivia come in with the reflector. I'm gonna shoot some natural light. Because the sun's coming in this direction, it's gonna hit that diffuser. We're still gonna get some beautiful, gorgeous light. And then I'm gonna see what it looks like bringing in the strobe. So Olivia, if you could please raise up the reflector. And one of the most important things as I'm shooting is I'm looking for inconsistencies like right here on the hand. I don't want the hand to have harsh light and then we get a line of that diffused light. So Olivia, when you're holding that, if you can either um, yeah, move around just like that and then, like I mentioned earlier with the pose, we'll try to keep the pose within this little kind of little frame here, okay? Beautiful, all right? And so now we're gonna compare and see what it looks like. We're just adding just a little bit a punch of light. When I shoot natural light, I try to shoot a little bit overexposed um, opposed to underexposed. So I'm gonna go, let's put my power, I'm gonna start at 7.8. You know, people ask me the question all the time, it's like, how do you figure out your power output? If you're doing high-speed sync, the higher the shutter speed, I already know that the power output's gonna be at seven, eight, or nine. So it's always a good starting point. So let's go here. We're gonna go three, two, and one. The hands, keep them like that. That looks really cool. Just move your arm back just a little bit so it doesn't block your face, yep. Okay, and just to recap for this shot, we had the harsh sun coming in, decided to bring a diffuser, saw that, hey, we don't need to use strobes for the shot, shot at some natural light, and then compare it with some of the strobe shots using the diffuser with the strobe. Let us know in the comments if there's a specific look that you'd liked, the natural light or the strobe shot with the diffuser. After I already found my first spot, I'm walking around and I'm noticing that the sun, we're getting that beautiful highlight within those rocks there. So immediately that tells me I can have my subject stand or sit there and use the sun as a free light source, as a rim light. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk down. Let's go ahead and check this out. Now, one of the problems that might happen is that we do have the lighthouse there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit it in a 35 millimeter lens. I did bring a 24 millimeter, but what I'm gonna do before I even tell my subject to come in is I'm going to check out 
and frame, check the framing basically with my camera and see what I can create. So I'm gonna come up closer and I'm gonna see what I can fit within my 35 millimeter lens. And look at this, this, this is just gorgeous because the sun is hitting the green trees and it's just giving it that nice beautiful glow. If this was diffused, what's gonna end up happening is that tree is gonna basically go into silhouette. It ends up getting very black and then dark and you lose a lot of that detail. Now I don't wanna to have to push the shadows in Lightroom or Capture One. And so, and you can see the difference right there that the sun got covered up by the, the clouds. If I can get that glow, that's gonna help the shot. But right now, I'm gonna go ahead and check out the framing and see if this is a 24 millimeter shot or a 35 millimeter shot. So based on my framing, based, based on what I'm seeing here, I should be able to make it work. I can definitely have my subject within this little platform here, and I'm gonna have the lighthouse in the background. So already I can, oof, man, I can see that beautiful little rim light. That's what we were talking about earlier, getting her position. If I position her here, we don't get that extra free light source. We don't get that like two light setup look. Position her maybe just a couple of feet away. We're getting that. The wardrobe is awesome. We got the oranges, means we get beautiful uh, complementary color scheme with the blue sky that we have, so good. All right, Marco, it's a little too split. We're gonna bring that light more 45 degrees. Even maybe just even, even more, dude, would be fine. Okay, and if we can feather that light a little bit to the right. I'm gonna start moving around. I, I try not to just stay in the same spot over and over again because I'm just gonna basically just get the same shot over. So I'm gonna try to get on the rock, see what I can get up here. And like I was thinking earlier, after I was doing the location scouting, I walked back, I saw all of this beautiful pattern. And so I figured with the orange and the rocks, all the color's gonna be on her. She's immediately gonna pop if I shoot a top down angle. So I'm gonna get that and just immediately get a different look. Even though I'm not gonna get the lighthouse, it's okay. Not every shot has to be with the lighthouse in the background. We're gonna go three, two, and one. Beautiful, Riley, what if you're tuning your nose away from the camera? That's beautiful. Is there any way that you can, for one of the poses, maybe put one of your hands like underneath your chin, maybe over the hair? And can we bring the hair down on one of the sides? So let's bring it on the left side. Three, two, and one. And because I am using a 35 millimeter lens, I'm trying to keep Riley um, right in the middle of the frame. I had that question asked, like the distortion with the 35 millimeter lens. So I'm trying to keep her right dead in the middle to prevent that distortion since I'm going for more of a little bit of a close up. I think I found the sweet spot by just shooting here, here. What's happening just because I moved a little bit to the left, you see all those people back there? You see the little tent? I'm using her body to cover up all of the background. I can still see the lighthouse. I still get the blues. I still get the sky. So by just moving just a little bit to the left, I'm able to hide out all the, those distractions in the background. All right, Miss Riley, we found the composition here. Three, two, one. After we found this spot, as soon as we started walking down, we saw a beautiful opportunity to capture some portraits down near the lake. And so we're definitely gonna make that work because in my work, I love, love using texture. Going back to the earth tones, her wardrobe, she's immediately gonna pop because we have a lot of real simple tones that she's just gonna pop within that background. I know I wanna use that tree. If I can squeeze in that lighthouse, that would be amazing. I might even use a 24 millimeter lens. Typically the widest lens that I like to use for portraits is a 35 millimeter lens, but I'm definitely gonna give the 24 millimeter a chance and see what I come up with. But the blues, once again, I'm a big fan of color. I'm always looking for color. We got the reds in the lighthouse. We have the greens, we have the blues. And so we're definitely gonna be able to make a shot work coming down and working with that area. 
now that I'm in the location of, I'm thinking of shooting at, there's two opportunities I have. I can definitely shoot in this direction if I wanted to, but I prefer to shoot with the sun in the background because it's gonna light up those clouds and give it that beautiful glow that I love in my portraits. And of course, once again, I can use that as a rim light if I want to. Now, I'm also looking at all the beautiful texture and all these beautiful details that we can get within this little surface here. So I'm gonna definitely put my camera to my eye. I know one of the things that I might struggle with is that there's gonna be people here. So I might have to do two shots in Photoshop, might have to phone snap some of them out maybe. We'll see, but I'm already looking with my 35 millimeter lens. This is my favorite lens, by the way. This is a lens that religiously stays on my camera. And so just wanna double check the framing and just see what I can work here. So this is definitely um, something that I can make happen. Now there is a little tent that they're kind of setting up over there. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to change my angle. If I shoot in this direction, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm gonna try to move right over here. And this is the part of photography, guys. You have to problem solve. You're always on the fly. You, you can't get frustrated with you know, the weather conditions. I know we were, we're expecting storms. You know, we have people here, but you gotta make, you gotta make it work, okay? So here, if I shoot here, oh, this is, this is much more beautiful. I'm glad that I just took a few steps to the right. And believe it or not, sometimes all it takes is just slowing down and just, what if I just take two steps to the right and change up my framing and you'd be surprised the composition can improve dramatically. I know for this shot, definitely just gonna focus here. Can you lean a little bit forward? Just, just a little bit. I kind of like that you were leaning back, but I just want you to lean up just a little bit more. I'm doing full body for sure, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm not getting the lighthouse. I, I gotta take a break from it, because then if not, every shot's gonna be with the lighthouse. And you know, I love texture. Your color's popping out of these rocks. I'm gonna shoot some top-down shots, maybe change my angle a little bit and get some of those blues, okay? Now, I know for the, yeah, I was about to say with the feet, I just don't want them like straight out. Getting that little foot up is perfect. All right, so we're gonna go three, two, and one. So now that I've got my top angle shots, I'm gonna just lower down a little bit. Even though I do have somebody in the background, I'm gonna use her body to block that person in the background. And we're gonna see what I get here because we get some cool little framing here with the tree. So I'm gonna have that tree in the background. You know, I, just trying to move around as much as possible to get so many different looks. Not just trying to stay in the same spot over and over. Cause like this angle, I'm actually really liking this. And it's funny cause I notice a trend, like usually my first spot is, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. But then after I move around a couple of times, that's when I find the sweet spot. Now that we're done shooting, remember when you find your locations, don't forget, slow down and try to get as much variety as possible. A lot of the times when I find my first spots or I think I find the correct angle that I wanna shoot at by simply either standing up or taking a few steps to the right or to the left, I can get a whole new composition. Let us know in the comments which location you like best and we'll see you guys on the next one.